Hi everyone, welcome to Write by Mia. I'm Mia and in this writer's library I will be talking about the novel Berta Isla by Javier Marias. And at first I wasn't sure if I wanted to talk about a book in Spanish because to be honest, I didn't feel as if I connected as much to it um, given that Spanish is not my first language and I feel more connected to books written in my native language, which is English. But I thought this video could be a bit different and that I could talk to you all about my process and journey reading this very long um, book in Spanish and what I gained from it and, and what it really taught me about myself and how I think and how I read. Um, so we can go ahead and jump right in. Um, super quick sort of basic plot. Um, basically this book is about a woman named Berta Isla who meets her husband Tomas Nevinson while they're in college in Madrid. Tomas is half Spanish and half British um, and they it's kind of like they immediately decide that they're going to stay together forever. Um, Berta is very sure that this is the man she wants to marry um, but what she doesn't know is that when Tom goes to Oxford to complete some of his studies he is a approached by the British Secret Service and asked to be a spy in this super secret agency. So basically the whole foundation of their, you know, relationship and eventual marriage is sort of built on lies and secrecy and it follows this relationship from the 60s when they're you know young college students all the way to the 90s um, and how this this double life that Tomas leads affects their relationship. And it really is a novel um, meditating on what life means and what relationship means. Can you truly be um, in love with someone who is never truly themselves? And what does that mean um, for us as individuals looking for connection? So it was a very interesting premise, which is why I wanted to read the book in the first place. Um, it looked interesting. And I also wanted to get some practice in reading in Spanish. Um, I was a Spanish minor in school and I'm a big on like watching telenovelas, listening to podcasts just so I can keep up with my Spanish. And Devin actually was like, why don't you read something in Spanish too? So I said, fine. And y'all, it was so much harder than I remember it being when I was studying Spanish in school. Um, obviously, we read, you know, different works um, of Spanish literature when I was studying it from, you know, poetry to, you know, novels to nonfiction, but reading it by myself without the help of either my professors or my classmates and getting into dialogue or debates with them about the work was really difficult. Um, and I think it was exacerbated to by just how long like this book is it's like over 500 pages and the writing style of Javier Marias is one that I even think would be difficult to read in English so it's kind of like a double whammy it was super long and the writing style just took a lot of um turns with the prose if I can say that you would have paragraphs that were pages long or even sentences that were as long as whole paragraphs and lots of divergences and the character's thought processes. So it was a lot. Um, and so to be honest, the first probably 50 to 100 pages, I just didn't even want to read anymore, though I found the story interesting and I was understanding the majority of it. Just the time it took me to read this in Spanish when I probably could have read it in English twice as fast was honestly very frustrating for me um, because I take you know a small pride in how quickly um, I can read and you know still retain and enjoy but this was definitely a slog in the beginning I had to get used to the way this author wrote I had to get used to sometimes stopping to look up words um, I had to get used to the cadence of the language again and it was really challenging but um, I think what made it really rewarding in the end was how my brain like got used to it. It was so strange. So like the first, like I said, 50 to 100, huge slog. 
Um, I felt like I was looking up every other word. Um, I was still kind of translating from Spanish to English in my mind, so I don't think I was really getting the flow down of the prose. And I don't, I didn't feel like I was getting a lot out of this novel, but I kept at it. And what I did was I stopped actually looking up words because I was like, you know what? I think this is interrupting my reading experience to have to go to like a dictionary and look up all of these words. So let me just see how I fare with just context clues. So I started reading it on the subway and the subway, you know, when you're in there, you don't have internet access. So I wasn't able to look up words even if I wanted to. And strangely, it became much easier to read. Of course, there were still some parts that maybe I had to reread or skip past sometimes and pick up the story in the next paragraph or so. But I was finally able to lean into and grow comfortable with the novel as a story versus me feeling like it was this insurmountable like school assignment. Um, and I eventually stopped having to translate in my head, which was huge for me because then I was able to read more quickly. I got to know the characters a lot better. Um, and I started to really enjoy it as a work of literature versus something that I could pat myself on the back and say I read a book in another language. Um, so back kind of to the story um, and what it made me think about and the things um, I really noticed. And I think what this author does really well and really interestingly is how he uses repetition to kind of dig through um, a character psyche. Because what was interesting was that the majority of the book was written um, from Berta Isla's first person perspective. So you're getting a lot of her inner thoughts, especially as she's coming to terms with the husband who isn't entirely there um, and figuring out how their way of life is being impacted um, by her, you know, husband's uh, job, I guess, as a spy. And then the novel has been bookended by a third person kind of rumination on Tomas and what he's dealing with, um, you know, in the spy world. And so because there were so many twists and turns in the prose, I felt like the plot moved and it didn't at the same time. So you would have whole chapters devoted to one scene. Um, for instance, there's a chapter where Bertha is watching an old lover wait for her at a cafe and she can't bring herself to go and talk to him because he is so very different from the person she remembers meeting um, as a college student you know 15 20 years ago and she is not very attracted to him anymore so there will literally be pages just about her looking at him and all of these thoughts going through her head of whether or not she should go down how her expectations have been you know completely disappointed um and how it all connects with her trying to come to terms with tomas disappearing in his absence with two children and what this means for her marriage and her love for him and how it's been affected and so i, I really liked that it went from these snapshots of intense character um consciousness and psyche to then it would go through maybe five, ten years in the space of a few pages where you're given very kind of short standard prose, you know, and then the year was, you know, 1977. Um, so it was a bit jarring at first, the pacing, because um, at times it felt very slow and then at other times you look up and ten years have gone by. Um, but as everyone knows, I'm a huge character person, so the development of the character through the prose and the kind of stream of consciousness style of writing was something that I grew to enjoy once I stopped having to think so much um, about translating in my head and it kind of was able to flow a bit better. Um, it's interesting because the author is very celebrated in Spain, Javier Marias. This came out in, I believe, 2018. He's written a ton of books, but this one was um, acclaimed by critics just due to its rumination on life and the big existential questions he asks about relationships and secrecy. Um, and I can definitely see why. Um, I will say sometimes 
the prose could get on my nerves. It was like a little too flowery and, you know, a sentence didn't need to last for a whole page. But, you know, you take what you can and overall I did enjoy it. Um, not only for the story, but for the fact that I could prove to myself that I am still able to not only read, but enjoy um, a work of literature entirely in Spanish, which is something that I haven't ever really done before because my other forays into reading Spanish were all academic um, or school related. And I had to do, you know, papers on it or you know I had to go to class and discuss it but this was something specifically for me to enjoy um, and I definitely will be reading more Spanish novels in the future hopefully um, so thank you all again for listening to this it's a little bit of a different um, video and subject matter for the writer's library but wanted to explain kind of my journey um, diving back into the Spanish language and novel form and what that whole process was like for me so as always, please like and subscribe. These videos are dropped very often and I love talking to you all about this. So thank you all so much for listening again. Talk to you soon.